let me respond this way. Your experience with Obamacare was before the Independent Payment Advisory Board became effective. Uh, it never has become effective uh, to date on that. Uh, there's some that refer to the IPAB as the death panels. Now, what the IPAB is supposed to do is to look is supposed is suppo is supposed to look at how much a treatment costs, what the possibilities are of the, the person uh, being re uh, restored to health so that they can work uh, after their disease had been. Uh, successfully treated life expectancies and a whole lot of other issues. Now, if the IPAB says it isn't worth it to spend money under the ACA uh, for that type of a patient, uh, then they will uh, prohibit any more uh, payments to that type of patient, and the patient can go off and get their own doctor, you know, at the sticker price rather than the discounted price, which very few people can afford. So, you know, in effect, an IPAB decision against uh, that is essentially a death warrant because if they aren't able to afford the treatment, they're going to pass away. Uh, we should not have a government controlled bureaucracy making decisions like this, period. No exceptions. Now, the Republican health care plan gets rid of the IPABs uh, on that. And what it does is two things. One, it sets up a high-risk pool, which will have an over $100 billion federal subsidy. And the reason that this is necessary is that if you have all of the high-risk people and the low- and medium-risk people, it raises the premiums on the low- and medium-risk people that people will decide to not go uh, with health insurance and you know just run the risk that they don't get sick or wrap their motorcycle around a tree and have a you know a very serious uh, uh, injury as, as a result of that. So the high-risk pool will have the subsidy in it uh, the subsidies will increase based upon the age of the people who are enrolled in the high-risk pool, and this will make the premiums lower for the low, lower and medium-risk people, which is important because if you look at what Obamacare has done, and it's just almost the opposite of what I've just described, uh, the Obamacare premiums in Wisconsin have increased 97% since Obamacare started almost doubling, and that does not include the announcement of what next year's premiums would be. So they're talking about a double-digit increase uh, on that, but we don't know how much. Furthermore, there were 115,000 Wisconsin tax filers that paid the fine to the IRS because they didn't have health insurance. Now, why didn't they get health insurance? Because they thought that what was being offered to them was too expensive. So, you know, having a high-risk pool and channeling the government subsidy to people who are high-risk, and remember, all of these bills uh, prohibit denial of coverage because of a pre-existing condition uh, on that. You know, we will be able to... Uh, well, you just, oh, you disagree with prohibiting coverage because of pre-existing conditions? You're a minority. So, uh, you know, what I, what, I can, what I can say is, is that, uh, uh, you know, with a pre-existing condition ban and also no limitations in any of these plans on either annual or lifetime caps uh, on that, you know, that will increase the cost for, for everybody because, as you said, we all have pre-existing conditions. But to figure out the way to get the people that are most expensive to treat in a separate pool and aiming the government subsidy at that will allow lower premium rates for the low and medium risk patients and maybe we can get more people to sign up for health insurance. At least that's what the hope is and that's what the thinking is behind that.